Sorry, Ted Gutteridge as the Doctor, Cat Furness as Alice Lee. Doctor Who, Solo. Fairy Tale of New New York by Gary Russell and adapted by Oliver Silcock. Where on earth are we? This, Alice, is the M72 Galaxy. I thought we were going to M42 to see, as you so put it, a Christmas festivity extravaganza that only this one, Unique Galaxy, put in the showmanship for. I don't like the way you always pretend to remember what I've said, word for word. I don't pretend, I do remember, thank you. Memory like... Cat kind. Uh, well, I was going to say like an elephant. And besides, this is neither the M72 nor the M42 Galaxy. This appears to be a large metal box. A humming metal box. Like the inside of a fridge. Without all the cold. So, nothing like the inside of a fridge then, I suppose. Ignore me. I shall. Just touching the floor, it feels... odd. I think we're on a ship, you know. A big one at that. I think fancy. Probably an old school dreadnought or something similar. Keen eye for history there, but I don't think so. Could be the engine room of an intergalactic liner, or the storage bay of an executive business ship. No, not enough health and safety signs. Cat kind. You said that a moment ago. That I did. Sharp memory of yours. So, why the attention on these cat people all of a sudden? Well, Galaxy M42 is home to the cat kind, so there's that. I brought some cat treats as well, just to show a gesture of kindness and to show no offence. Yeah, maybe avoid the treats. It sounds like offering a banana to a human being and saying, who's a good little monkey? Wouldn't go down well. Hmm, maybe you're right. And hang on a second, M42? You just said we were actually in M72. Oh, M42, M72, same galaxy. Just the number depends on if you approach it from the galactic centre or the great beyond. The galactic centre is where the Christmas stuff is going on, isn't it? Yes, actually. It was a rhetorical question, Doctor. Smart mouth. Don't you know it? So, in this particular area of space, wherever it may actually be, Felis catus would be the dominant species? If you're asking if everyone here is a cat, then no. But they do have a flourishing socio-economic presence. They run the galaxy's administrative services. Receptionists, personal assistants, fire and rescue, police, ambulance, and a rather large number of legal firms. All cat kind. I like cats. Someone has to. I'll try and get this door open. Wait, you don't like cats? I have done in the past. My, my opinions change here and there. When you've met enough cat people, figuratively and literally, well... Ah! You're either just thrilled to be around them, or polite for the sake of it. Really depends on my mood. And body. And if they're up to anything sneaky. Which they can be. Come along now. It's so different here. Everything seems illuminated. Peaceful. Soporific. Instant relaxation. The cat kind like bumping things into the air. Mm, I feel a lot calmer already. Let me just have a look up here. One moment. Back that way. Ahem, can I help you? <sighs> Hi there. Sorry, got lost. Awful sense of direction. We were looking for, um... Garfield. Garfield? Yes, Garfield. I see. Let me just check on my poxes. Poxes? Pocket system. Self-explanatory. Oh. I'm sorry, but I can't seem to find her. Nor am I familiar with the name. What department is she in? Dietetics. Matron Garfield? You must know her. Big cat kind. Very ginger, like me. Loves lasagna. Hmm. Novice shared to administration. Can you see whether a matron Garfield is registered in nutrition and dietetics? Or possibly gastroenterology? Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you. We have no record of a matron Garfield anywhere on New Earth, and she certainly isn't aboard this craft. Doctor? Oh, you're a doctor, are you? <sighs> Yes, but I'm not here professionally. Simply a social visit for Christmas. We'll just nip back to our shuttle and... You have a shuttle? Parked in the shuttle bay? 
Have you been through decontamination? There's really no need. Decontamination? Why would we... Ah! Well, decontamination confirmed. Admin is down that way, to the left. They'll deal with your queries. Good day. Let's take a look around, shall we? What about Christmas? What about it? Doctor, be serious. Why are we still here? Because this is a hospital ship from New Earth. Home of the best and most successful medical care in the Nine Galaxies. So? So why send a ship into space? They have exceptional facilities on the planet. Well, maybe this is an ambulance. I'm not... Feel here. This area of the floor. All the way up to the wall. It's warmer. Designed to be inviting to make people feel happier. It was colder where we met Novice Shea. We must be getting close. To what exactly? No idea. Look at them all. All the beds have human children in them. All varieties of children come to that, from across the sector. And that's the problem? Well, they're obviously in need of treatment, so why aren't they being treated on New Earth? The best paediatricians in the whole quadrant are down there. Doctor, there's another cat person coming over. Cat kind. Excuse me, but who are you? Um... Unless you're a parent, you must leave. You'll disturb the children. Well, I'm... He's Santa! Father Christmas is here. Who, me? Why do they think I'm Father Christmas? <laughs> it must be the app. It's not even red. <laughs> then there's the rest of you. I must protest. What do I do now? Say ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and then, voila. The coin is gone. But what's this in your ear? Again? No. <laughs> Amazing. Excuse me. Oh, hello. Novice Thelm has just alerted me to your presence in the ward. Who exactly are you? I'm Alice Lee. Well, I am Charged Harrow. You and your associate should not be here aboard the Abbey. The Abbey? Hold up, you're not just nurses, are you? You're nuns. A charge nurse with Alice? Not exactly perfect. Only one rank down from Matron, who I presume runs hospital. And the matron would only just be below an abyss. And if she's alerted, we really are in trouble. Think, Doctor. Excuse me, Tasha, wasn't it? Yeah. Are there any other humans aboard? No, they won't even let our parents visit. How strange. Why not? Maybe it's the plague. I reckon we're all carriers. You have a plague? Is that why most of you are hooked up to all these machines? I don't know, but we could carry the gene. Which plague, Tasha? Do you know the name? It should say on my personal tablet. We are the Sisters of Plentitude. I will say again, child, you should not be here. I do not wish to be listed your hows and whys of your unwanted and unsanctioned presence. I merely request that you both vacate before any more of my sisters or other patients are influenced by you being here. The children of the Receptor must not be corrupted. By Christmas joy? How could that corrupt them? Christmas is an old earth custom that has no place for the next and future generations of New Earth. The children have been taken away from New New York to avoid these childish fairy tales and superstitions. Says the nun. Our order is not like the old ways of theism. We are dedicated solely to abstention and the protections of the human children. Okay, I notice actually there are no um, cut kind children here. Our kitlings have their own unique nurseries on New Earth. They do not share the same problems as the human children's do. What's wrong with them exactly? Why are the children here? Are they in quarantine? You truthfully do not know. The tablet is under the bed. One second. Here. Would you look at that? How silly. There are no medical records on here at all. Certainly nothing about plagues. I think it's time I had a word with the charge nurse over there. No. Please, Santa. Don't do that. I'm not really Santa. I know. Just call me doctor instead. What? Oh, no, no, I'm not a medical doctor. 
Think of me more as a doctor of fun. Fun with a capital F. Okay, but don't go to her though. She eats children. <laughs> really? Yeah, she's new. She's taken four of us in the last few weeks. They don't come back. She even took my cousin Hector. He was kind of fat, so I think she had him for Christmas dinner. Roasted in the oven with sprouts and carrots. Lots of sprouts. She eats kids and she eats sprouts and stuffing. Well, that certainly is an interesting theory. Honest, we visitors only just arrived. While Specs over there plays Little St Nick, I just figured I'd ask some questions. <sighs> Security to the children's ward, please. Now, hold on. I am sorry, but you clearly have docked without clearance. The TARDIS doesn't dock as such. <laughs> Armed guards? Thank you for arriving so quickly. Her and him. Take them away, but do not alarm the children. Look over there, armed guards. So they are, and the charge nurse is leaving. Don't worry, I'll be right back. Hello there, I'm the doctor. No need to be rude, thank you. Please let go of me, I can walk just fine on my own. Doctor? Something interesting to consider, Alice. Why would you need cat kind security guards with big guns if this is just a small hospital populated by cat nuns and children? Doctor, will you stop fidgeting? I can't help it. We're stuck in the Abbess's office. I feel like a naughty school child. What's more is I'm trying to figure out all these pieces of the puzzle. None of this makes sense. <laughs> Uh, hello, you must be the abbess. We, um... Doctor, doctor, doctor. Hmm. What to do with you? Look at his face, he's thinking. Your robes, they're beautiful. This old thing, don't tell anyone, but I use it to clean my glasses. It cost almost as much as this whole ship did to build. I have a total of three different outfits and each one is annoying and uncomfortable as the last. And the laundry services complain that they need cleaning as often as they do. I honestly don't know why. I sit here all day going over documents, signing papers, reading reports and then I go to sleep. It's hardly as if I'm, I don't know, running through service ducts or climbing trees or... <sighs> well, I'm sure you get the hint. The thought is there, isn't it, Doctor? It's on the very edge of your mind. I'm getting something. Oh, bless him. I didn't catch your name, my dear. Alice Lee, um, Your Majesty. <laughs> your Majesty! Oh, how wonderful! I love that. <laughs> Uh, you travel with him, yes? Around the 20th or 21st century of Earth, from what I can gather. Yes, most of his friends come from that period. Does he still go around with that robot dog? Never did like him. Yappy little know-it-all. <gasps> I've got it! You're novice Aisha. <laughs> I have not been a novice for many years now, Doctor time has caught up with me. You don't look a day older than when I last saw you. I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. The milk vats. The milk vats of New Savannah. That was... How long ago was that? Oh, for me, around 60 years or so. For you, I assume a body or two. <laughs> look at you now, a Bess Aisha, boss of the bosses, your very own hospital, traversing the spaceways. Not tied to any small space, any one planet, or any one galaxy. Free to help others as you wish, roaming the universe, just as you always wanted. <laughs> I owe my sense of wanderlust to the Doctor. I know the feeling. I'm pleased for you, Aisha. Truly. Look at what you've accomplished. Oh, you have accomplished a lot, all right. Here you are now, the pinnacle of your career, keeping human children in a sealed hospital in space, with armed security guards to protect you, from what, exactly? A bunch of ten-year-olds who want nothing more than a visit from Santa? 
most of whom, by the way, are attached to centrifuges, draining their blood for who knows what purpose. <laughs> yes, I am so happy for you. You've become a shadow of the great cat you once were. Doctor! What? That's very rude. She's supposed to be your friend. Just hold on a moment. No, Alice. You hold on. And you, Aisha. Or a Bess, or whatever nonsensical title you've adopted. My, my. Haven't you grown impetuous in your old age? If I were you, I wouldn't be so quick to throw around accusations of adopting nonsensical titles, Doctor. Please do tell me, who exactly is Santa? Father Christmas? Mm. I've never truly grasped the idea of this Christmas thing the children so eagerly go on about. Perhaps you could enlighten me. Not now. There's something far more pressing to address first, if you don't mind. Apparently, one of your charge nurses is eating human children, and it's happening right under your nose. Hmm. Really, Doctor? <clears throat> well, at least that's what the children believe. I'm sure there's a rational explanation. Hmm. You presumably are speaking of charge tarot, yes? Children don't like change, now do they? They just don't trust it. Look, Tara only joined us a few weeks ago, and I think lacks the proper bedside manners to capably deal with children. Dr. Alice, humour me. Why do you think humans like us? You tend not to eat them? Humans like cats. They make good pets. Hmm, patronising, but absolutely true. Which is precisely why the Sisters of Plentitude took over the medical profession. Look, statistically speaking, the overall majority of humans find being in hospital a rather disagreeable experience. If the hospital staff are of a species that they are conditioned to relax around, it makes for a more comforting experience, resulting in better patients. A number of humans don't like cats at all. The Hancock hypothesis states that... Yes, well, there are a number of cats kind who don't necessarily warm to fleshy humans either, Doctor. However, we live in a civilised society and a multicultural universe. We learn to unite despite our differences. Aisha, be straight with me. What are you doing to the children? Ugh. Do you know the main cause of antagonism between cat kind and humans? Allergies. to fur. <laughs> Your friends are always one step ahead of you, Doctor. I was about to say that, actually. So, let me see. You want to live in harmony with the humanoids of New Earth, which means you need to defeat allergies. Oh, of course! I'm so stupid! The children aren't allergic, are they? There's nothing wrong with them. You're trying to synthesise the qualities that make them immune. Absolutely. At which point we would devise a way to put that unique antihistamine safely into the atmosphere of the planet, allowing allergic humans to live far more pleasant lives. <sighs> Simple. That's why you won't let their parents aboard, to avoid contamination or false results. Have you told the children that? Told them what? The reason they're here. They're all under the impression that things are far more sinister. They think they've got the plague. Give them an early Christmas present, Aisha. Tell them the truth. And throw in some chocolate and a satsuma each while you're at it. We've never kept anything from the children. At least, we've always informed their parents of every detail. <laughs> parents don't tell their kids anything useful. We tell our kitlings everything. Adult humans are different, Aisha. They can't be trusted to remember important things like that. They haven't had millennia of civilization to grow up like the cat kind. And from what I've seen, their parenting skills can range from overprotective to downright useless. Just tell the children what's going on. Trust me. That way, they'll be much calmer and capable of producing more of the natural antihistamine you need. And then, well, you can send them home. I, I just cannot believe I never... I had no idea. No one told me that the children were distressed. I'd be pretty distressed myself if I was tied into a hospital monitor, not knowing why, unable to see my mum and dad. Especially if I thought Charge Taro was eating my friends. Tasha told me that four of her friends were taken by Taro and hadn't come back. Well, I... Security, please. And another thing. Quiet, Doctor. Noko, if you could bring Charge Taro to us immediately, please. Ma'am. Oh yes. You wanted to know why we needed those guards, didn't you? Well, I have two words for you, Doctor. Space pirates. Ugh. There are slavers, corsairs, and just 
just general wrongdoers out there in space, many of whom would see a group of human children as valuable bounty or excellent slaves, hence our security guards. Of course. I'm sorry for jumping to conclusions. Hmm. Think nothing of it. Very grown up of you, Doctor. Oh, hush. Abbas. Charge Tarot. It has come to my attention that you have taken a number of children. This cannot go on. Some of them are even believing... Well, it doesn't bear thinking about. Will you explain, and will you explain now? I am so sorry, Abbas. I have done you a great disservice. I think you had better tell us everything. I'm glad all the children are safe and back together. Me too. So, where do you think we're going? Well, to wherever whatever was being done to them is, I would imagine. Oh, would the two of you please stop speculating? The children are safe now. Taro will explain the rest in due course. Yes, sorry. Such long corridors. Aren't they just? Habes, I must insist you return to your office. We can deal with this matter. You do not wish for your robes to get a fraction of dust on Nonsense. We are in a sterile atmosphere. I wish there was some dirt in these corridors. It might finally justify the Abbey's cleaning bills. I do not understand why we need to bring the children. Oh, please silence yourself, novice Shay. It is important for the children to feel safe and at ease. The truth must be told. As you wish, Abbas. <laughs> That's her told. Too right. She hasn't shut up the whole way here. Doctor. Sorry. Doctor. Yes, Tasha. I don't understand. We have our friends back now. Even my cousin Hector is okay. Charged Taro didn't eat him or anyone. So why can't we go? I think there's more to this than just your missing, though quite not so missing anymore, friends. It's important that we all see. Everything will be fine, trust me. Okay. Through here. Thank you, novice Thelm. After you, Charged Taro. Yes, Abyss. What are Kitlings doing here? Oh, of course. Okay, right, I'm confused. Everyone's safe, clearly some kind of Christmas miracle. Kids are happy, and obviously these little kitties are happy to see them, but I'm still not sure what's going on. Well, have a look around you. How does that... Oh, hang on. Those machines, they're just like the ones Tasha and her friends had in their ward. Ten out of ten, Alice. Well, this explains everything. It never occurred to you before you should did it. That allergies worked both ways? I can't say it had. Taro, if you'd told me what you were doing, I would have helped. You should have come to me sooner. But, Abess, I could not. The Abbey's mission, the reason the sisters are here, is to help the humans to overcome their allergies to us. But these kidlings, from my own family, are allergic to humans. So you've been reverse engineering the human children's natural antihistamine to develop something similar for cat kind? It is a rare affliction for a kidling to be born with, Doctor, but a devastating one. Well, it would seem from what I've witnessed that this hospital is required to expand its horizons. <laughs> you know, Doctor, it's funny. When I'm around you, I always find just that. My horizons expanded. It's a gift. Come here, Taro. I solemnly swear we will work together to find the cure. For the sake of those kitlings and for the humans they might one day grow up with. Thank you. It's all worked out. I think I might need to expand another horizon while we're here. Tasha, I believe I will need your assistance. What with? Now that Charge Taro's secret is out in the open, I think it's high time we introduce the cat kind to the joy of Christmas, once and for all. <coughs> gather round, gather round. Now we have to tell them all about Christmas trees and find a way to get one to the ship. Get some presents, sing some Christmas carols. What else, what else? Ah, now, do you all want to know exactly how we can cook an amazing Christmas dinner? Oh, look at you, Doctor. Always like Father Christmas. A real life fairy tale. Doctor Who Solo, Fairy Tale of New New York, directed by Oliver Silcock. Ted Gutteridge starred as the Doctor, with Kat Furness as Alice Lee. Charlotte Heatley as Charge Taro. Mabel Louise as Tasha. Rosalind Wheeler as Abbess Aisha. Sound design by Oliver Silcock. 
Music by Big Finish Productions. Written by Gary Russell and adapted by Oliver Silcock. Based on a short story from the BBC novel Doctor Who 12 Doctors of Christmas. These audios are a non-profit fan series made for the love of the show. No copyright infringement is intended.